Good morning. Um, thank you for coming and I'd just like to introduce myself. My name's Ian Grout. I'm the course director for the uh, Bachelor and Master of Engineering Electronic and Computer Engineering programme. So this morning in this half hour session, what I'd like to do is just to talk about the programme, which is our LM118 programme, give you an idea of what the, the programme is about and types of things that you would actually be doing uh, during the, the actual course itself. So uh, the structure of the today is we've got half hour session, so I'll talk for about 20 minutes and then there'll be time at the end for any questions and answers. Um, but as we go through the, the session this morning is if you've got any questions, please do put them up in the chat as we go through. Uh, Colin Fitzpatrick, who's our head of department, is actually on the on the call as well, so he'll be able to answer any questions as they come up in the chat. OK, so what we do today is just talk about the department, which is our department is electronic and computer engineering. The LM118 programme, which is our Bachelor and Master of Engineering, electronic and computer engineering, and I'll explain what we mean by the Bachelor and Master aspects of it, uh, because the, the Bachelor part of it is a four year programme. It's our honours degree programme, level eight programme, and that can lead on to a one year, a fifth year, which is our LM1806, which is our master's programme. The LM18 programme is accredited by Engineers Ireland, so just mention that. I'll talk about some of the careers and options on graduation, uh, talk quickly about some of the entry requirements, and then we'll have time at the end uh, for any questions you have. But say, please do put questions up in the chat as we go along. Uh, before I carry on, I'll just turn my camera off so you can actually see all the slides as we go along. OK, so. Um, so thank you for coming this morning. Uh, so we're the Department of Electronic Computer Engineering or ECE. Uh, so we're part of the Faculty of Science Engineering and we would have a number of activities that we actually do in the department, which is in the theme of electronic and computer engineering, but it also spans things like information technology, security, robotics, uh, embedded systems design. So a wide range of, of um, disciplines or, or activities that engineers would actually do in, 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 in real life. Um, our, we're actually our web page has all our information as, as you need, so you can pop along to the web page afterwards um, and actually see sort of the activities that we do. Uh, just to give a feel is that you've probably seen some images of the university campus. Um, our department, we're actually based in the main building on the campus. So one of the, if you're on the right hand side of the slide there, you see the, the image of the, the front of the main building. We would actually be on the top level of uh, which is level two of the main building. So all our offices, all the laboratories would actually be based in the main building along level two. So it gives you a bit of an orientation to to the campus. Um, as a t usual department, we would actually have a range of undergraduate degree programmes, which are undergraduate courses, postgraduate, which is master's programmes and also research activities. But I suppose here today we're interested primarily in the Bachelor of Engineering Electronic Computer Engineering programme, which is our four year degree programme, which can then lead on to a fifth year masters. Uh, the actual activities we do in the department and in the course, you would actually study in the course, have a very strong research theme. So all the, um, all the uh, lecturers in the department and the professors, they actually be active in research in key areas such as sort of electronic circuits, and systems design, sensors, instrumentation, robotics, energy in the environment, uh, communications and telecommunications, uh, IT and network security and computer software as well as electronic hardware. So our idea is that we integrate the, the electronics uh, and the, the computing and the software together to form um, uh, useful systems in, in, in the real world. Um, including in that is, is the emerging area of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So there is a strong theme uh, towards the end of the programme into, into the aspects of machine learning and artificial intelligence. All our information is actually would be available on the web page, so um, you can pop along to the page afterwards. It's, uh, it comes off the university main pro main web page into the courses. Uh, say my name is Ian Grout, I'm the course leader uh, or course director of the programme. You can always email me uh, anytime if you've got any questions. My email address is ian.grout at ul.ie and Colin, who's our Colin Fitzpatrick, who's the head of department, is actually also here on the chat. So please do ask any questions as we go through the, the next few minutes. To give an idea of, of what the programme is about, the, the, the bachelor's degree is a four year degree. So essentially we have years one, two, three and four, which is what our L118 programme. And then after year four, you have the option to, uh, to, to graduate with the four year Bachelor of Engineering 
electronic and computer engineering degree. But at the end of year three, you also have the option to, to continue into year five and graduate after five years with our Master of Engineering, Electronic Computer Engineering degree. So at the end of year three, if you decide that you'd like to carry on to the master's degree, you would then follow year four and year five uh, in order for the, the master's degree track. So that's where you see, so this is why we refer to it as a bachelor stroke master of engineering, electronic and computer engineering. Uh, so you have the option of graduating with the bachelors or graduating with the masters. To give a bit more detail to that sort of timeline, uh, just to give you an idea, is that um, if you come directly into the LM118 programme, you would follow the four or five years of the degree programme. Um, there is an option at the end of the first semester, if you are on a, a relevant University of Limerick degree programme, to have the option to, to apply to transfer into uh, our programme in spring semester. And our, um, then in years two, and is that you would be studying here. So years one, year two, you'd be studying here at university. And at the end of year two, we have the cooperative education program. So um, during that year, end of year two and into year three, we have uh, the work placement aspect of the program. And then year, at the end of year three and year four, you would carry on to, uh, to do either the bachelor's or the master's degree. So the, as you go through, we'll, as you go through each year, then we'll, uh, we would actually tell you about the, the actual options and the, the things to do during each year. Um, so that's basically the idea. So there are options. If you decide to come directly into our program, that's great. If you come onto another degree program, there is an opportunity to apply it to come into the program at different stages, depending on on uh, what degree program or what studies you would actually be currently undertaking. You would also see at the, in the um, our faculty is that we have the LM 116 Engineering, which is the common entry program. So uh, many people come onto that uh, common entry program and then decide what uh, engineering specific program they'd like to study once they've arrived into into the University of Limerick. Um, if you do come into the LM116 programme, the common entry degree programme, is that there is an option at the end of the, aut uh, the autumn semester and the end of the first semester to actually apply to transfer into our electronic computer engineering degree programme. So as you go through the first semester, is that uh, you would be, we would actually talk to you towards the end of that semester uh, to see the options. So if you decide that you would like to study the electronic computer engineering program, there is the option to transfer internally from the 116 program, the engineering common entry, to our electronic computer engineering program. So it's worth keeping in mind that particular option. In a bit more detail with, with our degree program, is that there are a number of different uh, parts to the actual program. So as you study uh, through the first four years, at the end of second year, which is in the summer of second year, and into the uh, autumn semester of third year. So essentially from May at the end in second year to January the third year is that the, you have the, the cooperative education program, which is the work placement program. So many of our students would be would actually undertake a, a work placement uh, uh, with, with companies we work with uh, in Ireland, but also opportunities outside of Ireland as well. But this is would be paid work experience. Then in fourth year, is that if you've opted to study on the Master of Engineering degree program, we have the opportunity that in the spring semester, which is January to May in fourth year, uh, to study internationally in one of our partner universities. So this would be an international exchange where you study for the spring semester, which is one semester in another university. And at the end of fourth year on the master's degree track, there's the opportunity to apply to do a summer internship as well. Uh, which would lead into the fifth year master's degree program. So on the master's degree track, there is a couple of opportunities in terms of international exchange and the summer internship uh, you could take. Um, when you come into our degree program, this slide has got quite a few things on it, but basically is that everything we do in our electronic computer engineering program follows different uh, uh, options or, or streams. All, all, uh, everyone coming into the uh, electronic computer engineering degree program would undertake the common syllabus, which is the first two years of the program. 
Then there would be the summer and semester five, which is the cooperative education program, which is nine month work placement. And then into when you come back uh, in third year, we have different streams. So you would decide on which particular uh, stream in the bachelor's degree you'd like to study, whether it's electronic engineering, computer engineering, robotic engineering, electrical energy engineering, or a general stream. So the general stream gives you opportunities to, to select uh, subjects or modules uh, as you like. Uh, so you have a, a, a menu, uh, send your menu of, of modules that you can select to essentially to to make a, a, a more focused uh, set of subjects for yourself. You would follow that into fourth year and then in fourth year, if you would like to to uh, continue on to the master's degree track, then we'd, uh, we would talk to you and you'd tell us that you'd like to do that and then we would um, transfer you onto the master's degree track. So you would then follow in the fourth year and into fifth year, you would follow the master's track modules which uh, give you a sort of broad range of, of, of different subjects uh, leading to the master's degree. To give you an idea in terms of what subjects you would study, these are the first years one and two modules. So the idea here is that we see, you see here in semester one, semester two, which is the first year, semester three and semester four, which is the second year, uh, you're studying uh, typically five subjects or five modules. Um, in the first semester, actually, you see there are actually six modules, but two, two of those modules are half modules. So they would follow basically uh, 30 ECTS credits per semester. So you see in the first semester, it's a broad range of, of engineering from chemistry, electrical uh, engineering, computing, um, engineering science and mathematics. So that's sort of common to the, uh, the common entry program as well. Then in second semester, we would study more of uh, electronic hardware, electronic circuit design, computer software, which were for us would be uh, primarily Java in the first two years. We look at uh, semiconductor devices and digital systems. So we do analog and digital electronics, as well as the mathematics focused for the uh, for our, our program. Then, um, then in set year two, you'd continue into that with electron electronics, digital electronics, mathematics, and, and software. And then we start carry on to, to do more focused applications of the, the theory. The cooperative education uh, is a, it would be basically two semesters, so summer and autumn semester, which is nine month work placement. Typically, uh, the major in, um, companies based in Limerick, Cork, Dublin, Galway, but not necessarily so. Our, our students would be undertaking their cooperative education throughout the, throughout Ireland and some uh, students will actually be doing placement uh, internationally as well. That's all supported through our cooperative education program and you see on the right hand side here some of these subjects in terms of things like security and forensic, artificial intelligence, software engineering, mobile wireless systems, uh, sensors, sets of networks, biomedical, automation, robotics. So, so it's a broad range of different types of companies that you would you would have the opportunity to actually work in. Our L118 program essentially is is basically is the four years and then the fifth year for the masters. Each semester is based on this European credit transfer system. So each semester is based on 30 ECTS credits. Um, our teaching semesters are based on 15 weeks where we would have 12 teaching weeks, one revision or a reading week and then two examination weeks. So that's typical a structure for um, for our, our teaching. It's slightly changed over the last 18 months with with the uh, with the COVID-19 restrictions. So we've actually, but at the mo moment we would run uh, both face-to-face uh, -face teaching on campus and also some where appropriate sort of online sessions. Um, typically, in terms of when you're studying um, subjects or modules, is that there would be two one-hour lectures per week, a two-hour laboratory per week self-study time and project work. So in terms of the, the module assessment, in terms of what you, how it's assessed, is that it's based on, uh, on, on continuous assessment, so coursework and also a final end of semester examination. And uh, so, but they, it's not a specific set of assessments for, per module. Uh, it does, the, the assessment does vary depending on the, what the, the subject is and the type of module that you would be studying. In the department, which we're in the main building, 
we have our own laboratories for computing, so general purpose software, computing labs, electronic hardware experiment laboratories, and we also have our peer support center, which is uh, student led uh, peer support for particularly like second years, supporting first years in any specific first year subjects that they would like to talk about and study a bit more detail. So we have a range of sort of laboratories which are open uh, during during the, the, the working day. Uh, when, the, when there are no scheduled teaching in the laboratories and the laboratories will actually be open so you can actually go into the laboratories during the day to continue doing any coursework or project work when when the when the laboratories are free so our laboratories are open uh, during the, the normal working day in the fourth year uh, spring semester fourth year then um, uh, there is a international exchange uh, semester which is which would be so, so you would we we'll, we have uh, um, partners around the world, uh, particularly like the American universities. So we have students next semester going out to to US universities, um, and we will actually support the the application and 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 making sure that everything works in terms of what you would study in the in the um, in the partner university. Make sure that that so that maps on to what you would have been studying normally here in the university. And then there's the uh, the uh, master's degree uh, subjects, which uh, in the summer at the end of fourth year, there's the ability to summer internship, which can actually support uh, the fifth year project as well. So as we go through the uh, different parts of the program, then so everything sort of leads on from one step to the next step. So each year leads on from the previous year and then activities you do within that year will will lead on from previous activities that you would have completed. Um, this this year we have a number of students planning to go out to uh, US universities, but there's the opportunities to to study in in universities in fourth year in in America, for example, or in Asia, or, or uh, we also have partners in like New Zealand, uh, South America, as well as North America, as well as Europe. Um, so there are actually opportunities that if you're really interested in, in actually living and studying in another in another country for a semester. It can be supported through this this program as well. So, for example, we have a number of students planned to go to uh, University of Massachusetts Lowell um, uh, next semester and the University of Texas at Austin. So, we have a number of students planning that at the moment, and they're planning to to actually go out in January uh, for for four months. Our LM118 program, our Electronic Computer Engineering program, is is accredited by uh, Engineers Ireland, and so every uh, every few years we would actually have our program uh, accredited by Engineers Ireland. So the, the program is kept up to date with with the latest uh, trends and the latest requirements, uh, and the uh, Engineers Ireland accredited programs are recognised around the world through the Washington Accord. Types of careers is that it's a wide range and we see sort of today's sort of engineers will work in a wide range of different uh, areas, wide different companies. Uh, it could be sort of more software oriented or it could be IT oriented security, for example, or it could be more electronic uh, circuit design or applications. So it could be in sort of in things like smart energy management uh, sensors like environmental sensing, biomedical electronics, uh, medical electronics to, to aid people could be in the robotics area, which links into artificial intelligence and machine learning. It could be in the communications or telecommunications and also game systems. So the wide range of different um, careers and options and opportunities for graduates from this program to 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 work in to actually after they graduate. Um, also, the, the ability with with uh, programs is that is that what the, you can start off in one career, start in one area and with a degree and experience, then you can always uh, change careers to move into different areas as, as you go through your um, uh, your your uh, career. So there are plenty of opportunities uh, um, from graduating from this program. Okay, so on graduation, the opportunities are to go directly into the workplace uh, to do a post postgraduate program, which will be a level nine masters, which will be a one year studies. Uh, to go into research, which could be a one to two year master's degree or to do research in a PhD, which would be typically three to four years. So the opportunity is to, to actually on graduating to go to directly into work. 
to do further uh, postgraduate talk postgraduate programs or to go into research. So a number of our graduates would actually be actually still in the department working on PhD projects, doing their own personal research projects, uh, supported uh, through sort of uh, uh, national international schemes and also through supported through the university. So there is the opportunity after the four year degree uh, and, uh, and the five year and the five year, fifth year of the masters to go into uh, the work, to start into work or, or carry on to research. Our entry requirements for this program is that this year the, the points were, were were slightly higher than than previous years, uh, but they were four four five. So typically the the points are in the range for four hundred to four fifty. Um, the the requirements are uh, high, ordinary level and high level uh, subjects at Leaving Cert, but we do need high level mathematics and English and another and another language and a science subject such as physics, chemistry design and communication, biology, agricultural science. So really what we're interested in is high level maths, uh, English and another language, and a science uh, laboratory based uh, subject at Leaving Certificate. Uh, we also, the university also is an active partner with the HEAR and the DARE schemes, as well as supporting mature students. So uh, the opportunity is to go, if you are eligible to go to apply through HEAR and DARE as well. Um, for those who uh, did not study high level mathematics or didn't get the grade for high level mathematics at Leaving Cert is that the faculty also provides a special mathematics entrance examination. So if you're interested in doing an engineering degree but you don't have the um, the grade at high level mathematics through uh, through the Leaving Cert is that you can apply uh, and sit the special mathematics entry examination which would be in um, in sort of September each year before the semester starts and then um, then that we would recognise the passing that special mathematics entrance examination as equivalent to the Leaving Cert high level maths. Uh, we have a number of support centres in faculty science engineering, uh, such as the ICT learning centre, the science learning centre, the mathematics centre, learning centre and the um, peer supported le uh, learning centre. And the, the regional peer supported learning centre is actually based in, in one of the uh, rooms within the department. Uh, which are on level two of the main building. So that, that's actually supported through our department as well. So it's supported through the department and through the, the faculty uh, th with this peer supported learning centre. So it's, it's a student led uh, peer support. Uh, for the, the university has a number of scholarships available specifically for the uh, electronic computer engineering programme. Then there are specific um, scholarships which would be uh, there's a number of scholarships available. So you can see here a quick uh, summary of the scholarships. Again, all this information is quite a bit of information on the slides. All this information is actually available on the, the course website uh, on the university from the university main website. Uh, so yeah, there are a few scholarships available that can be applied once you've, you've once you're with us in the department, then uh, and registered at the university, you can apply for these uh, scholarships. I will stop talking there, so thank you for listening and um, I'll be happy to take any questions that you have and Colin here is, as well as online so we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Well done Ian that was a really comprehensive overview of the okay. program and I just had one question during the during the presentation it was about the uh, was there any effect on grants of people transferring courses like you know from LM116 to LM118 and of course that would be um, you know completely unaffected by it when somebody is continuing their studies then yeah that that that, that doesn't uh, interfere in any way but uh, happy if anybody wants to wants to come in with any other questions now that the presentation is over we're very excited to have students going international uh, again this year um after after a after a pretty tough yeah. time and most of an academic year at home uh people are really interested in spreading their wings again so it's it's it's, it's great time and that we've set up those um those exchanges now and really made it straightforward for people to to go to the us especially i suppose is where we have the closest the closest links and connections with and of course we get the the students from the us coming to our course as well then because it is an exchange program and the students come both ways so it is a you know, interesting and nice to, to meet um, meet people from a different country or studying somewhere else and, and get their take on things. 
that's that's right. We do have quite a few students in the department from say from the US on exchanges and also mm -hmm. through Erasmus program as well. That's right. So we have uh, quite a few European students, which is is a really good mix for everyone to to actually work together. Yeah. No, no, we've got it. Actually, I think we've a notable number of French students this year in our in our in our courses. What, I, what I've seen. OK, so then we still have a couple of minutes left. Is there anything? I mean, it's such a clear presentation, I guess, it covered it covered a lot of everything. You might want to know an awful shame that you don't get a chance to come to the campus, particularly today uh, to take a look around. The campus is a great selling point, really enjoyable and nice place to, to spend some years. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll have an opportunity for a for a um, you know a proper uh, on site open day, perhaps in January. I think. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you do have the opportunity to come onto campus in January, then uh, you'll be able to actually walk around the, the department and see the laboratories. So you'll mm -hmm. be able to actually see the what facilities actually look like. So it's 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 quite quite difficult to try to visualise what what the the learning. Uh, environment is uh, the learning mm -hmm. experiences uh, at the moment, but if you do get opportunity to come on campus, you can walk around the campus. You can actually will you be able yeah. to talk to people in the department, be able to see what facilities we have on campus, um, and so oh. it gives you opportunity. With questions coming in, I was enjoying our conversation so much. Right. I didn't okay. some of those questions <laughs> I, coming. So let's see. Okay. So um, so the, the, it is it has been recorded, I believe, so it will be available later. Um, where could I check what course you can internally transfer from? So the, the, the major one, the internal transfer comes from the, the general engineering uh, after the first semester because the two semesters are, are are common. So really after the first 15 weeks, you make your, your choice to uh, uh, transfer. Rough, roughly how many who apply get the course? We, we typically have about 50 students uh, in first year. Yeah, so 50 students in first year. Um, what universities are involved in the international exchange? Uh, so the, 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 the two most prominent ones are the University of Massachusetts, which is located just outside Boston, um, and then the University of Texas at Austin. And then we are also just about to sign an agreement with the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. So you can have a cold, you can go for a cold weather experience or a warm weather experience, whichever, whichever you wish. Ian, you can talk a bit more about this, maybe. Sure, absolutely. I mean, it's it, there are the university. It's it's the university has a number of a, a large number of actually uh, of of partner universities around the world, which on different faculties such as science, engineering, or business and arts and humanities. Um, is the, we if if there are uh, programs which are compatible with our program. So, for example, they would do engineering that would have subjects which are uh, which would be subjects you would study in another university that can be mapped onto our university limerick modules and and as a course leader i would actually work with you to do, to to work that out is that there's no there's actually no limitation as to uh, which university as long as it's compatible uh, courses and the the numbers are available as well we have had in the past for example uh, a cohort uh, a number of students went out to the university at massey Massey University in New, New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah. That was a few years ago. That was on a, a on a uh, ex Erasmus external program, um, but that was as very useful. So so we do have links in uh, uh, basically most countries, North South America, Brazil, for example, uh, uh, North America, um, as well as European universities. Most European universities we have links with through Erasmus pro the Erasmus program. Uh, then there's things like uh, places like uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, uh, Vietnam. We have a student coming in uh, on Erasmus program this semester through from Vietnam. So there are places in Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand. So if there are, if the university has a, 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 a link up with them and if you if you get the opportunity to go onto the university main website is that our inter there's a section for international. Uh, for international for incoming students international and then there's a there would actually be a link there to the, the actual which universities we work with so we could look at the if you're interested in in a university we could look at that and say look at see is the opportunity there in terms of the subjects you could study so have another question here Ian that says how steep would you say the learning curve is for students who may have an interest in the course but have not done subjects at a leaving cert which relate to the modules Okay, so um, 
Okay, so that's that's quite a good question. Um, yeah. Okay. The if you it, it, so, I suppose the key thing in terms of in terms of the electronics and the computing, we're not assuming that you would have done uh, that, those subjects before. Um, so we actually start with electronics and computing. We start at the sort of everyone starts at the the base level essentially is, and so we're not assuming that people would have started with had background electronics and software programming before. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first year is more of a more of a uh, foundation year really to get everyone up to the same level at the end of first year. But if you have done a, uh, we would need to have done a science or studied a science subject. So it's with the science subject, it's more the having practical you know, laboratory type skills, actually working in laboratory or to done some experiments, the taking results. So that's that's the key thing is just to have an experience in the, in sort of a science subject. Mm -hmm. The mathematics, the mathematics we do will be extension or continuation from leave insert to mathematics. There is a there is a bit of step change upwards so that they'll so, uh, but the mathematics we do actually are related, are really focused more towards engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of chemistry, then no, everything again in the first semester, everything starts as if you, we, we don't assume that you would have done chemistry before or electronics or software programming. Yeah, the, everybody coming in has uh, gaps in, would we'll say, their base knowledge. So we start and assume that you know uh, that the electronics has to be taught from scratch, the programming has to be taught from scratch, the science has to be taught from scratch, and so the maths then, you know, kind of I'd, I'd say even for the first year is more a revision of the leaving cert um, before it moves on, and and the big the big difference with maths I suppose is just the the learning style, you know, that that you're transitioning from, you know, like a, a very from from a a school based environment where teachers correcting homework all the time and really monitoring your progress and you're moving over to becoming a more independent learner. I think that's one of the the, the major. The, yeah, the, the transition over to becoming a more independent learner is a bigger is a big is a bigger um, change for people than actually the content of what they're actually studying, I think. And that's what first year is really all about is is, you know, you know, transitioning from one style of learner to another and then, you know, things move on fast after that. Absolutely, it's independent yeah. learning. It's learning to learn as well as sort of technical subjects that you learn. Exactly, rather than the actual content that you get, it's it's how do I, you know, how do I how do I develop myself? Because after I finish my degree, guess what? I'm going to have to continue learning for a very long time after that as well. So, uh, so being prepared for that is uh, is really important. I think it becomes more learning becomes I think uh, more interesting. It's it's more interesting when you when you do become an independent learner. Is actually is that you, you you learn how to pace yourself and you you start to con continue learning new things out of interest and yeah. at your own at your own style and your own pace, and that's where it becomes more intuitive and more and uh, and much more more useful, I think. And even even trying to choose what should I what should I what should I learn next? Like what do I need to learn? What how am I? Uh, what skills are you know where do I need to be in a few years time and trying to figure out what I need to learn and then going about and learning it you know it's uh, yeah I, I've got so many textbooks that I'd like to sit down and continue reading um, yeah yeah you, you, might, you, you spend a lot of time <laughs> exactly just dipping your toes in different things seeing you know do I want to spend more time doing artificial intelligence or yeah. you know what about the internet of things is that something I really yeah. need to get get deeper on or you know robotics are going to be Really big and computer vision, you know. So yeah, it, it's it, it's a it's it's a fascinating field because of that, because of the fact that there's always a new kind of wave of of technology coming along. And I think now it's it's more linking uh, different areas of engineering or and science mm. engineering that weren't linked before. Like for example, in the past, say artificial intelligence was was a certain domain that was was not even linked to say robotics, mm -hmm. and now it's integral to robotics. So so yeah. you, you actually. Are, we would ultimately be bringing different areas of engineering together and sort of producing the new links. Yep, you know, so true. Good. So, um, any last last opportunities to pose your questions? So the Ian's email address is, is there if if anything comes up. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and this will be available. This presentation will be available after the after the event uh, as well. I believe. I'm not one hundred percent sure where, but. If you keep if you keep an eye out, I'm sure you'll I'm sure you'll come across it. Good. 
so I, can, I think that that's that that's a, that's a wrap from from our side. Um, so enjoy the enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay, great. Well, thanks for listening. Bye now.